Income tax 2022-2023, small business, how to pay income tax. Let's do some wealth preservation with some tax preparation. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course. Each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. Most of this information comes from the tax guide for small business for individuals who use Schedule C, publication 334, tax year 2022. You can find it on the IRS website, irs.gov, irs.gov. Looking at the income tax formula, we're focused on line one, that being income. Remember, in the first half of the income tax formula is in essence an income statement, although it's just the outline, the scaffolding, other forms and schedules feeding into it. When we think about line one, we're focused primarily on the Schedule C, another schedule, which is in essence an income statement for a business having income minus expenses, which we can think of as business deductions, getting to the net income that flows into this top line of our income tax formula. This is the first page of the 1040. We're focused on line eight. The Schedule C flows to the Schedule 1, which flows to the first page of the 1040 here. Here is the Schedule C, which in essence is an income statement with income and expenses. How do I pay income tax? We're thinking about this question from the perspective of a small business owner, one that reports on a Schedule C. Federal income tax is a pay-as-you-go tax. You must pay it as you earn or receive income during the year. Although most people have probably heard this and are probably paying on a pay-as-you-go system, I don't think this concept really sinks in for many people. And when people move from a W-2 type of employee situation to their own business, they are often shocked and don't fully understand this concept in my experience. So let's take a step back here and think about the big picture. We have an income tax type of system. That means we're gonna be taxed when we generate income. The federal government has incentive to kind of have oversight on the tax that we are paying. One way they can do that is to try to be more intrusive and get information about the tax that is being paid. That means that the federal government has leverage over the payer in a transaction. If you have an employee employer situation, the government has leverage on the employer, the one that is paying because they're the one that wants the tax deduction. So they're gonna force the employer to act as their tax collector. That means that they're not only reporting to the government your wages, W-2 wages, uh, they're also actually taking the money from you before you receive it, withholdings, and giving it to the government. Now, the government would want that to happen during the year as the year goes through because what they don't want to have happen is that you file the tax return by April 15th of the following year and then you have this big tax bill that in essence you can't pay at that point so if the government wants to get paid it makes sense for them to want to get paid during the year at each paycheck you give a piece to the government that means it's they're more likely to receive their money than if they waited till the end of the year and then you give them all of the money at one point in time so the problem with this kind of system is that we don't have an easy tax system. If we had just a flat tax type of system, that would be very easy to do. And you can see that in the payroll taxes, which are more simplified, flatter type of taxes. We could just say, okay, it's 15%, it's 10%, and in whatever our pay is, we multiply it by 15 or 10% or whatever, and we pay that to the government as we go. But we don't have a flat tax. We have a progressive tax that's combined with a whole lot of deductions and a whole lot of other complexities and credits and whatnot. That means trying to understand how much I should pay out of a single paycheck uh, when, I, when I think about how much I'm gonna earn for the entire year is quite difficult. So that's why we have the W-4 form and we try to figure it out. And the goal is to shoot for a refund. We shoot for a refund 
not because we want to have just money to spend during that time like it's a holiday when we when tax season comes but because we're trying to avoid penalties and interest by underpaying if we underpay then the IRS is going to hit us not only with the tax we owe but also with the penalties and interest that's what we're trying to avoid that's why the tax tables are set up to overpay a bit because the complexity of the tax code isn't perfect and we can't hit the target you know exactly so when people move from a w-2 type of system when they're forced to do that pay-as-you-go type of system and then they move to a schedule c type of system now they don't have anybody that's forced to act as the tax tax collector and 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 people often don't do the projections to figure out what their taxes are going to be for the schedule c type of business and they get behind on their taxes now there's a few reasons for this sometimes people think hey that pay as you go thing the irs actually kind of advertises oftentimes like the pay as you go system is a system that they're trying to help you out we're trying to help you out by having you pay you know at every paycheck so that you don't end up paying at the end of the year it's just something to help you out and uh we're, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna force the withholdings to happen during that time period but that's not exactly the rationale for it the, the irs wants their money sooner because of one the time value of money and and two they're more likely to get paid if they take a piece of your pay at each paycheck or at each interval rather than periodically at the end of the year so it's not a voluntary thing and it's not like they're trying to help you out really <laughs> they're trying to make sure that they get paid and they're trying to maximize uh, how much they get paid so it's not an optional thing if you go to a sole proprietor type of business you still have to pay them as you go the other problem is of course i don't know how much income i'm going to make it's a new business even if it's not a new business my income could fluctuate wildly from year to year so how can i figure out how much i owe when i have a progressive tax system and i don't have no idea how much i'm going to earn at the end of the year that's a problem you got to make a projection for it and you've got to try to figure it out it's it's a lot more difficult to figure that out than if you had a w-2 salaried situation where you know how much you're going to make if i know i'm going to make sixty thousand this year then i can figure out my taxes a lot more easily than if i have my sole proprietor business and i have no idea how much i'm going to make but i still need to make my estimated tax payments and i can't just say well look i earned twenty thousand in the first quarter so i'm going to pay a tax rate based on twenty thousand no you're going to have to pay a progressive tax rate that means you have to project out how much you made for the year and then figure out how much you would owe based on that projected number in order to get it accurately the other thing that messes people up is the self-employment tax when you're a w-2 employee they take out social security and medicare as well and that is more of a flat tax so when you report on a form 1040 you don't really have to to do any reporting much at all for social security and medicare unless there's a problem but if you're doing your own business the government wants the equivalent of payroll taxes which is social security and medicare in the form of self-employment tax that's another huge hit that people are just it's just not in their mind much because that's just automatically taken out of their paycheck and when you think of the form 1040 you think about income taxes and people often miss the payroll taxes so that's some some reasons why people get get messed up when they go into the schedule c and if you get behind on your tax payments even if your business is doing well that often is very damaging uh a start <laughs> to a business so keep that in mind so an employee usually has income tax withheld from their pay so if you're a w-2 employee it's forced to come out of your pay the the employer is forced to be the tax collector and it's and it's done in such a way this is what i i think the problem with our tax system is in a lot of ways is that the, the government's trying to make things so easy so automatic so so that individuals are all employees rather than contractors instead of having their own business they're going to be uh, employees and then the employers are taking care of the system that people don't fully understand what is happening because they're not actively participating in the system but at some point you're going to have to actively participate even if you're not a sole proprietor because at retirement then then at that point you're gonna to have to do your own taxes uh at that time too so so that i think that's one of the inherent problems about the the government trying to trying to automate 
everything and trying to be more intrusive than rather than having having a self-report and an audit system but that's my opinion in my opinion and everyone's opinion. if you do not pay your tax through withholdings or do not pay enough tax that way you might have to pay estimated taxes so if you have a schedule c business you might have to pay using estimates because you don't have any w-2 withholdings so estimated tax payments uh you generally have to make estimated tax payments if you expect to owe taxes including self-employment tax discussed later a one thousand dollar or more uh, when you file your return use form 1040 es to figure and pay the tax now you might say well what if i don't what if i don't make estimated tax payments you know four quarters throughout the year well then they're going to hit you with the sticks what i call their sticks right the penalties and interest what do you what's your goal for taxes to pay as little taxes as possible and then pay them hopefully as late as possible too right so if they weren't going to hit me with a stick i would pay them as late as i could just from a cash management standpoint that would make sense to do if i can manage my cash and pay them by april 15th of the following year that's what i do but i can't why because they'll hit me with a stick no. i'll end up paying more money than i would have anyways because i'm gonna have to pay not only the taxes they're gonna be charging me penalties and interest and my goal is to pay as little as possible so if you do not have to make estimated tax payments you can pay any tax due when you file your return so for more information on estimated tax you can see publication 505 if you want to drill down on it in more detail what are my options for paying estimated tax you can pay your estimated tax electronically using various options if you pay electronically there's no need to mail in form 1040 es payments vouchers so these options include now before i go into the options here realize that if you have a a schedule c type of business you might be in, in a couple different scenarios you might no longer be at a w-2 employee and now you have a schedule c business instead that's your primary source of income in that case you're almost certainly going to have to make estimated payments unless you're going to run a loss on the business if you have income that's significant you're going to have to make estimated tax payments in that situation however you might be in a situation where you have a w-2 job and you do some gig work on the side you're just picking up some side money in that type of situation well in that case the problem you your w-2 withholdings if you if that's all you have and you don't make estimated tax payments the w-2 withholdings are likely not going to any longer be enough to cover the added income you're going to have from the schedule c business so then you have a choice you could increase the w-2 withholdings uh in in order to cover the added income that you have or you you can have the withholdings from the w-2 employee and and make estimated tax payments for the schedule c uh type of business so so those are some some options that you have um, when you're thinking about that so how could you pay them you could pay them electronically one pay electronically through the electronic federal tax payment system the eftps two pay with direct pay by authorizing an electronic funds withdrawal when you file form 1040 or 1040 sr electronically so when you pay your uh when you file your taxes your your tax software you're using or your tax payer software will have that often three uh paying by credit or debit card over the phone or by uh internet if you buy, pay by credit card i don't think the irs charges you but the the payment might be charged from the credit card company so an electronic transfer is probably the cheapest way to pay them if you go on to the, your account at irs.gov then you can you can pay them pretty easily uh find your electronic payment options if you can connect to your bank so other options include uh, crediting and overpayment from your 2021 return to your 2022 return. So note that the estimates of your payments become more and more important going forward. And oftentimes it's really kind of sad when people get get behind on their payment. Underpay employees and overpriced merchandise. Because, because if they start a new business and it's doing well, but then they get behind on their payment, what ends up happening is by April 15th when they do their taxes of 2023 let's say for 2022 tax year they're going to owe the taxes and penalties most likely no. for tax year 2022 and then to get ahead of things because now they got behind on things 
they need to make the first quarter estimated tax payment for 2023, which is just a killer. It's just crushing them at one time because they didn't <laughs> they didn't realize the, the, the significance of the taxes because I think they, because when you're a W-2 employee, oftentimes you're just not thinking about it because you're not actually participating in paying your own taxes. And so it's kind of a shock when you, when you have your own business and people often get behind. So, so another way, if you have a refund coming from, let's say your 2022 taxes, for example, you can either take that refund, say, give me the money, or obviously you can roll it over and say, just roll that in to my first quarter payment of tax year 2023. And then you can just pay the difference and keep rolling into 2023. So, so it's not too bad as long as you're ahead of things. But once you get behind on things, then it starts to steamroll a lot of uh, a lot of people. Uh, and it, again, even businesses that would have been profitable, like they're doing good, and then, but they just didn't they just didn't you know take this into consideration. They just don't want to believe it. What do you mean I owe <laughs> all last year and the first quarter? Yeah, well, it's because anyway. Or mailing a check money order. You can mail a check or money order with a form 1040 ES payment voucher. Penalty for underpayment of tax. So if you did not pay enough income tax and self-employment tax for 2022 by withholding or by making estimated tax payments, you may have to pay a penalty on the amount not paid. That's the point. That's what you're trying to avoid. The IRS isn't trying to be nice here. It's like, well, we're just trying to... We're just trying to make you pay as you go so that it'll be helpful to you. So I'm trying to help you. Come on. No, no. They want their money earlier and they want it to be more likely that they're going to get paid by making you pay them as you earn the money. And if you don't do it, they hit you with sticks, not literally penalties and interest. And we're trying to avoid getting hit with the sticks, not literally penalties and interest. So the IRS will figure penalties uh, for you and send you a bill. Or you can use form 2210 under uh, underpayment or estimated tax by individuals, estates, trusts to see if you have to pay penalty and to figure the penalty amount. For or more information, see publication 505.